want to transform your art in a super fun way, let's get messy and get painting. Hello everyone, my name is S Comic Maker, and in today's video I'm going to show you a type of painting that can add a pretty cool look to your artwork. There's a couple different things that you can do with it too, which I will show you later on, but let's start with the supplies. For this, I use Canson watercolor paper, a cup of water, scissors, a plastic bag, I used a grocery store bag that I cut in half, and lastly, paint. It can be acrylic or watercolor, it's totally up to you. But for this, I used acrylic because it dries a little bit faster so that I could draw on top of it. I also use a light box at one point, but it isn't an absolute must for this to work. While I sketch here, I want to give a little bit of background on this process. I actually used a similar technique to this in a video that I made forever ago, which I will leave an iCard to here. What we are doing today though is kind of a weird knockoff version of what's called a monotype print. Printmaking was such a big part of my high school and college experience that I've wanted to share with you guys. I'll definitely be making more videos about printmaking in the future, but I wanted to share this with you because I feel like it's one of the easiest types of print that you can do at home. Essentially, a monotype print is a unique type of printmaking that is normally done on glass or plexiglass where you paint an image and then use paper to pick up the paint by pressing the paper into the colors that you've brushed onto the glass. It's a really cool technique that creates some very interesting results. In that video, I mentioned how you can also do this and get neat effects with a plastic bag, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. Mostly printmaking is done on a surface like wood, glass, linoleum, metal, etc. But my teacher in college showed me this method and I used it for some of the artwork that I made for my college portfolio. There are so many different things you can do with this, so let's start with what I'm doing for this first image. For this piece, I decided to start by drawing and outlining everything first. This way, when I use paint, I can make more decisions about where I want the colors to end up. For no particular reason, I drew this angie boy and knew that I wanted to use colors that represented how he feels, so I went with warm colors for this one. Using the plastic bag, I placed the artwork under it and use my light table to see where the drawing is. If you're trying it out this way, make sure that your image is face down because when you make your print, you're going to be laying your paper down this way anyway. Your image is kind of reversed this way, so if you don't do it this way, then you're going to end up with your colors kind of flip-flopped from where you wanted them to be. You're also going to want to water down the paint that you're using. The more water you use, the less of an effect you're going to have. So that is super important to keep in mind, but I spread the paint out how I want it onto the plastic bag, then push the paper down onto the surface. You can have the plastic bag flat out more or you can crumple it up more. The choice is totally up to you. And voila! It is a super cool way to give your art some abstract color. Obviously, it's a little bit more difficult to control, but the results are usually really, really cool. Like I said before though, the more water that you have mixed with your colors, the more the colors will have less of that scattered texture look. But if you have areas like that that you want more, you can always wait for it to dry and do another set of colors on top of the same piece. So go wild. I actually felt like I added too much water around where the face ended up and I wanted more of that scattered look. So I went back into this piece and added more of that scattered look onto the face. We're gonna come back in later on and add a couple other things to this one, but while it dries, let's go on to the second technique. This one is super simple. It's basically to go ham and print some cool looking paper. This is a fun way to make some really unique pieces too. Like I said before, this can be done on glass or plexiglass, but it's been a while since I've done it like this, so I'll be continuing to use the plastic bag. Pick whatever colors you want for this. I had two pieces of paper I was going to do this with. Use your paper as a guide underneath the surface surface you're working on so you have an idea on what the paper will pick up. And for this, I chose this really pretty blue, purple, and green colors. At first I regretted the green, but it ended up looking much better when it dried. For the second piece of paper, I really liked the blue and purple combo, but after I printed it, I felt like it was missing something. So once it dried, I cleaned off my surface and went back into it with yellow. I don't think that it added much to it, but it turned out okay. So now you have two prints, but what do you do with them? Well, there are a couple things. If you like the abstract look, you can pick other colors 
colors and print more colors on top of it. You can take paint and paint things on top of it. You can draw on top of it with a pencil or a pen or a marker, or you might like how it turned out as is and want to just keep it as an abstract piece. We will be drawing on top of it for this video, but first let's give it a minute to dry and I want to show you one other method. The third technique for mono printing that I'm going to show you today is to try to fit the colors into your image. So you'll need to have a completed drawing again for this one. I wanted to draw a girl this time and switch up the style, so I looked up references for girls with long hair and braids because I knew I wanted to have some different colored hair for this last technique. This method is similar to the Sailor Moon video that I linked earlier, except with a plastic bag and without scratching into the paper. After finishing the drawing and inking it, it's time to get my light box back out again. This technique is a little different because you're trying to get a little bit of control in a messy painting technique. In my original video, I kind of eyeball where I wanted the paint to go, which is difficult because the image has to be flipped for this to work. There are a couple ways that you can do this though. You can flip your image and print it out and use it underneath your painting surface. You can trace the reversed image to make sure that it lines up with the size of your line art. Or if you already have a light box like me, you can use it to see your drawing through it. With the leftover paint from my previous prints, I immediately thought of pretty rainbows and knew that this is what I would be going for for her hair. So I worked on making sure the paint colors faded into each other a little bit and then slid my paper out from underneath. This is the nerve wracking part because then you can only hope that you lined everything up right and that your colors end up in the spots that you wanted to. And and all right, it didn't come out too bad. The colors didn't really seem to take with the hair on the right side, but I kind of like the effect of it. So I think this one is a win. What's really neat about these now is that you can leave them as is, or you can keep adding to them. Once they're dry, you can do a couple different things to them. For the rainbow girl, I went back into it with Copic markers for her eyebrows, eyes, and lips. I was worried about lining it up with her face correctly, so I didn't try to do a background for this one. So instead, I went into it with a colored pencil to do the background. But you can go back in with markers or paint or whatever you want to use. Just to show you that there are tons of different ways that you can go into this, for the boy I decided to try to make him stand out a little bit more from the background by going back into him with some paint. So I dipped back into my acrylics, watered it down, and painted over some of the parts like his hair and his jacket. That way he has a little bit more dimension and we can still see our printing technique underneath. Lastly, let's head back to our other prints now that they're dry and do some drawing on top of them. Since we have two of them, I'll save one of them to sketch on another time and we'll work on the other one for the rest of this video. It's always a good opportunity to draw one of my original characters so I went with my witch girl Zoe. These prints are so much fun to draw on because I feel like they have lots of energy to them. You can then go back into this with markers, colored pencils, or paint if you really want to, or you can try painting over it digitally too and have a neat traditional background like I did. There are so many options when it comes to this technique. When I did this technique in college I actually actually used this method a lot. Here's some of the pieces that I made back then. I printed a lot of paper with all kinds of different colors and then drew on top of them in a sort of Art Nouveau style and colored parts of it with markers. Some of them aren't the best looking back, but they were pieces that I was really proud of at the time. But that's it for me this week, guys. If you watched this video and ended up trying this technique out, be sure to at me or tag me on Twitter or Instagram. I would absolutely love to see how your prints turned out. It's a really fun method that I enjoyed and I'm so glad that I got to share it with you guys again. Being a person who struggles to work with more abstract art in general, this is a really easy way for me to do it without having to think about it too much. But this comic maker, these are all nice, but I don't see any banana prints. I'll be honest, I'm kind of disappointed. Oh, but banana man, you're already a truly unique piece of art. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> butter my bread, why don't you? You're right about that. Finally, some recognition. <sighs> oh my god, you're a nut. What? I'm not a nut, I'm a banana! Look at this girl. Can't even, can't even get her food right. And you know the difference between a banana and a nut. Why don't I even stay here? I don't even know it. Ridiculous. Anyway, thank you so much to my amazing patrons for making videos like this possible, and thank you so much to all of you who like, comment, and share my videos. As always, I appreciate you stopping by, and I hope that we can draw together again soon. Bye guys. <laughs>